do you think there's a selective pressure to avoid being run over by cars? I mean, I'm not sure that's true. I mean, well, certainly well, people, suppose uh, you know, you're, be, you're, you're, no, you're being run over by cars is a source of mortality, unquestionably yeah. a large one in some populations. But the question is, is it differential with respect to the traits of the population? So is natural selection over and humans are at a greater risk of succumbing to a new threat or pathogen? Anders. I think in the long run, yes, it's over. In practice, it's still going, but I think we are taking it over with our technology. I think Freeman Dyson was somewhat wrong when he said it ended 10,000 years ago. That is where the agricultural revolution spread around uh, the world. And we suddenly changed the way we lived. Starvation was no longer quite the same problem, although it certainly had reared its head many, many times anyway, as population grew and Malthusian forces quite often led to horrible disasters and famines. But the food itself, of course, causes selection effects. If you can digest milk when you're a grown adult, you have an advantage. Now you can use milk products much more readily than if you're lactose intolerant, which is the default uh, situation in humanity. But a few beneficial mutations arose in a few different places and have seemed to have been spreading rather vigorously because they give you an advantage. It looks like there have been changes in gene frequencies and, uh, around. But I think in general, as we get better medicine, as we are doing the humane thing and helping people who are sick, whether that is by something acquired or genetic, these forces get weaker. And we're adding new forces because we're a technological species that is learning how to use genetics and is very likely to turn that power onto itself, if not right now, at least in the foreseeable future. Which would mean that in the long run, I think evolution is not going to be by natural selection, but by technological forces. It would be erroneous to say that selection has been eliminated completely. It's well known result from, from basic evolutionary theory that in a very large population you really only need small differences in selection, in viability, um, to, to generate um, selectively induced change in a population. Also worth remembering of course that evolution is not the same thing as natural selection, so although selective pressures may have been weakened, uh, that doesn't mean that the human species doesn't evolve because natural selection isn't the only um, cause of, of evolutionary change. I mean, chance is another, another major factor. Um, finally, I, I would say, in answer to the question, are we more at risk of, is the human species more at risk of succumbing to a pathogen? I don't think that fully, you can infer that from the relaxation of selection pressures that has undoubtedly happened through uh, modern medical and other technological advances. Um, one thing to say about that is just that in a very large species, extinction is less likely. Um, another thing is that when you relax, relax selection pressures, genetic diversity will typically increase. And we usually think of genetic diversity within a species as a buffer against extinction. So I don't think that we can infer anything really about the increased susceptibility of the human species to extinction at the hands of some viral or other pathogen from the fact that selection pressures have changed. Nature is, of course, very much the environment set up by other organisms, whether that is the virome, uh, moving genes around and attacking, attacking bacteria or, and the organisms surrounding them, or our environment, which is both natural and artificial. After all, there is selection going on for genes that make you less likely to get run over by a car as a kid. Uh, because, well, right now we have selection for that. However, that only came into being relatively recently. And it might be that autonomous cars get really good in a few years, and then that selection just disappears. So whatever those genes happen to be, get different selection. So can I ask about that? So you, th you think there's a selective pressure to avoid being run over by cars? I mean, I'm not sure that's true. I mean, well, certainly well suppose uh, you know, you're, be you're, you're, you're... No, you're being run over by cars is a source of mortality, unquestionably yeah. a large one in some populations. But the question is, is it differential with respect to the traits of the population? Uh, if that, you're, I mean, if is you're the idea impulsive, that small people have a greater risk? Uh, if, you, if you're impulsive because of, let's say, in the, the dopamine system, your brain works in a particular way because you have certain versions of those enzymes and the receptors, you might decide to run out in the street much more likely than somebody who's less impulsive. The less impulsive person is less likely to be run over by a car. So in an area where there's a lot of traffic, 
there is going to be a selection. It's not like there is a have, to have a lot of traffic. traffic and a lot of car accidents for that to play out. I think <laughs> impulsivity is more likely to lead young men to go out and die violently in homicide. But, but there are genetic uh, factors over. affecting impulsivity. That, that's yeah, relatively sure, yeah. stable. Uh, and many of these factors, of course, affect a lot of different things. So it might be, if you're impulsive, you might also end up in the back seat of a car and, uh, uh, with, with uh, somebody and produce more offspring that way. So these, pa <laughs> yep. these patterns are quite often really messy and affected by this environment. For example, there are some genetic variants that correlate with having more in their kids. So they would seem to increase your fertility. Why aren't they all over the place? And the answer is, they seem to be very culture dependent. Uh, there are different genes when you test it in different places and probably different types. So none of them really win out because we humans are changing the context. I know Shunetra was talking about cooperation. Almost to continue watching this video, Click the link in the top left or in the description below. With a free trial, you can enjoy the full talk and thousands more. Thank you for being part of the conversation.